This conference will now be recorded. 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 It is uh, April 8th. Is that even possible? It's April 8th, and we are mm. online today with Gunter and myself, Guy Severson, and we are going to be talking about yet another uh, spiritually focused topic that uh, we will unfold within the conversation. Gunter, would you like to open us up with a word of prayer? Thanks very much indeed. Our loving and caring God, our Heavenly Father Jehovah, through Jesus we want to approach you now and we are mindful of the time uh, almost 2,000 years ago when your dear son Christ Jesus willingly offered up his life, his perfect human life, so that humanity in general and those that listen to you and listen to him could have a future. And we very much appreciate how uh, little people respond throughout the earth. So those who, like Guy and his dear wife, and no doubt to some extent Boniface too, recognize the inestimable, inestimable yeah, difficult word, the value of your son Christ Jesus' blood. We want to briefly focus on that and recognize what we can do to show our appreciation as we always ask for your Holy Spirit for this discussion. We do so in the name of the one who uh, sacrificed so much um, in a way that was totally unjust. But we appreciate it nevertheless, as we give you thanks in his worthy and precious name to you. Amen. Amen. Sorry so about before, that. Before you lead out, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I uh, originally said, I thought, oh, chapter 29. And I looked at that and thought, oh, this would be a great topic. And then I, I looked back, oh, chapter 27. This is a good topic too. But I look forward <laughs> to one day uh, uh, dialoguing on chapter 29. Who knows when? Yes, Go ahead, Gunter. That's that's exactly. I mean, this is this is a progressive, um, what do you call it? Uh, progressive revelation. understanding, yeah, revelation. That's it. That's it. A progressive revelation of how over the centuries the truth has been hidden by and large, and how, according to Daniel, Daniel twelve, for instance. Gradually, the truth has become clearer and clearer, and this is uh, something that personally I have valued very, very, very greatly. And I know, with all your research that you've done, Guy, you know this is once again a common basis that we have, isn't it? Okay. Amen. So, so let's go through that fairly speedily. We don't need to spend an awful lot of time because I know afterwards you will discuss with your, your dear friend Boniface any details that he might need to know, yeah? So, mm -hmm. how can Jesus' de death save us on page 111? Would you like to do the, the first one, please? Sure. Uh, well, do you want, uh, so you don't want the paragraph Re read or you do? 
No, let's go. Let's go for the sake of uh, you know focusing our minds and hearts on the subject. Let's go through the paragraphs because we can go through those quite quickly. Okay. So, uh, but there's a paragraph before number one. Go on. Okay. We sin, suffer, and die because of the first human couple, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God. But Should our not. situation is not hopeless. Jehovah has provided a way for us to be delivered from the curse of sin and death by, by means of his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that by his death, Jesus provided a ransom. I love that verse, by the way. A yeah. ransom is the price paid to release someone. Um, can we just stop and go to that verse? Because I don't see that they're going to that verse here. Um, yes. but, uh, uh, John, John, John 3, 16 or Matthew 20, 21, no, no, no. 8? Um, no, not that one. Um, Timothy, Timothy. First Timothy two four through six. Yeah, by all means, cool. Um, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, I know you and I are in complete agreement. I'm just going to make one quick statement here based on verse 5. Mm -hmm. um, of course. How is it possible for, for God to be a mediator and also God? Is God beside himself? Okay, very let's good. go ahead and continue on. Very <laughs> good, on. very good, yeah. very good. You, you see, in, in religion, you're not supposed to think. I get, yeah, apparently, right? <laughs> you're so. supposed to, you know, you whoever stands in the front and says, look, this is the way it is. And like, personally, the, the little experience I've had in the Protestant church in the past, I felt like a right dummy. And I thought to myself, well, that gentleman with the red nose there, um, he must know what he's talking about because I haven't got a clue. And what's right. more, when he, when he finished, I still didn't have a clue. So I thought, okay, he knows more than I do, so therefore I need to sort of accept it. And then, obviously, years later, you start to think, don't you? Yep. All right, lovely. Good, good, good. Okay. That is a beautiful scripture. Just give me the, the reference again, please, and I will read it from uh, this because it's a slightly different rendering and it's First it's a good reason. Tim First Timothy 2, yeah. 4 through 6. Four, 4 through 6, that's about, yeah. Okay, so it uh, in verse 3, this is fine and acceptable in sight of our Savior God, whose will is that all sorts of people should be saved and here comes a slight change and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. The reason why accurate knowledge, because in the original Greek, it's not just knowledge, but it's accurate knowledge, epignosis. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, a man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a corresponding ransom, slightly different translation again, which is antilitron uh, in the Greek, which means of equivalent value. Uh, meaning in this case to Adam, this is what is to be witnessed to its own uh, due time. Okay, thanks very much. That's great. Sure. So, so please continue. I finish Con that paragraph. Do you want me to continue? Please, if you would, please, uh, okay. Guy. The price Jesus paid was the value of his perfect human life. This is where we get Matthew 20, 28. That's it. Do you want to read it? Sure. Maybe. Hang on a second. Uh... In America, they do things fast and big. Well, there you go, right? 
Even so, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And there's another ransom, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So it virtually says the same here. Yeah. Just right. as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life as ransom in exchange for many. Good? Okay. Amen. When Jesus willingly surrendered his right to everlasting life on earth, he opened the way for us to regain all that Adam and Eve had lost. Jesus also revealed how much he and Jehovah love us. This lesson will help deepen your appreciation for Jesus' death. Lovely. Nicely read, Guy. And, and and certainly I'm I'm sure that in discussion at some time with your your friend Boniface, he will also benefit from detailed discussion on that. Yeah. Sure. So any questions on that first paragraph? No. It's really straightforward, isn't it? No, just another uh, just uh, another comment that reaffirms that first paragraph, mm -hmm. and that's uh, mm -hmm. Romans eight two. Yeah. And that is, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death, which yeah. really is what exactly happened yeah. when yeah. Adam and Eve and we choose not to embrace the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yeah, good, good. I know that's one of your go-to. Uh, yeah, it is. I've I love that. that verse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, one of these aspects of, of Bible truth, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, to one, how can we benefit from Jesus' death today? Um, I'll read that, yeah. Because we are sinners, we do many things that displease Jehovah. However, if we are truly sorry for our sins and ask Jehovah through Jesus Christ to forgive us, and if we do our best not to repeat those mistakes, we can enjoy a close bond of friendship with God. 1 John 2, 1. The Bible says, Christ died once for all time for sins, a righteous person for unrighteous ones, in order to lead you to God. 1 Peter 3, 18. So, uh, would you like to read 1 John 2, 2, 1, please? Sure, one moment. Sure. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And yet, once again, once again, I, I don't understand how people can look at this verse <laughs> and see a trinity. I don't get it. Yeah, no, no. You know, Guy, over the years, and we've been, well, Marie and myself, we've been doing this public ministry, uh, and obviously there's the schooling uh, based on the scriptures in the earthly part of Jehovah's organization for, for something almost 40 years now. And I'm, I'm exactly like you in that respect also, where I think I read something like that. And because we read it with wanting to understand what, you know, what God is telling us, we understand exactly that this idea of a trinity is nonsense. Yep. But, but what I found time and time and time again, and that's in the public ministry, as well as online. In general, people start with religion. And one of the biggest cons that um, Jehovah God's and Jesus' chief adversary has pulled is to say all religion is good. And yet, most people simply accept what they're being told. And whether that is true or false, or whether it's, it is fantasy or whatever it is, they accept it. Now, it's well, only, sorry, go on. 
there's a reason they accept it <clears throat> because then well, they can do then they can do whatever they want however they exactly. want because they want and that's what they want exactly that's exactly the and point that that religion goes far outside any christendom type uh definition into a variety of different things including secularism which is also religion. that's right the same with nationalism I'm sure. you know nation, nationalism has its own national god its own mm -hmm. national symbols i mean when when i grew up in germany and eventually i found out a bit more about how germany functions supposedly as a republic and then i thought to myself why have they got the image of this of this uh, eagle there because they had that eagle decades before so now in the bundestag you have this image of this eagle what's that doing there and it was used beforehand for absolutely evil purposes you know so you change it you change the, the appearance slightly and you say there you are that's our our national symbol yeah wonderful right and so <laughs> you know another exactly as you say okay so um the explanation of that particular se section is quite clear isn't it would you like to read the point two please no uh, okay yeah okay, got it we didn't read for, I guess we did because it's just right there. Okay, all right. In you can read it if you want. Um, well, it, we the Bible says Christ died once for all time for sins, a righteous person for unrighteous ones in order to lead you to God. Um, and then number two, in the future, how can we benefit from Jesus' death? Um, I think we can do that today, not in the future. Yeah, uh, good. Well, in the future, too. Mm -hmm. um, Jehovah sent Jesus to offer his perfect human life so that everyone exercising faith in Jesus, which happens to be the faith of Jesus, I know that mm -hmm. I added that, might not <laughs> be destroyed but have everlasting life. John 3 16. Mm -hmm. Thanks to what Jesus did, Jehovah will soon undo all the bad things caused by Adam's disobedience. This means that if we exercise faith in Jesus' sacrifice, we will have the opportunity to enjoy life forever on a paradise earth. Yeah. Okay, we didn't read the footnote. Would you like to read the footnote, please, footnote. about uh, definition of sin? Sin is not just the action. I don't see that. No, I'll read it then. Sin is not just the action of doing something bad. Sin also refers to the damaged condition that we inherited. Mm -hmm. So let's let's look at Isaiah 65, a beautiful scripture which we often use in the ministry to show that there is a secure future for those who wish to avail themselves of it and the love that Jehovah and Jesus showed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. I guess we're going to be doing some work in heaven. <laughs> and, or on the new earth, shall we say. And they this shall plant the vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And mine elect shall in long enjoy the work of their hands. Well, there you go, right? They shall yeah. not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. You mean I don't just get to sit on a cloud and play a harp? <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> I think this is, this is more productive, isn't it? I tell you what, right? Mm -hmm. Have you and done you, you know, the interesting thing, and I know I don't think it's completely on track, but the interesting thing about that is when you build, what are you doing? You're creating. That's right. And we are made in the image of who? That's Father right. And son. And son, that's created. right. That's right. So yeah, excellent, excellent. Uh, Maria does. Uh, she she is very artistic, and she does all sorts of things. She she's a real homemaker, um, and we have moved for various reasons. Why we were in the UK uh, once or twice. And ultimately, we've moved here. But all the time, Maria uh, has made uh, pillows, or should I say cushions, stitched. She, she stitched pictures. And some of those products of hers we still have here in Gran Canaria, because some of them we were able to take with us. She also makes cards. And she makes cards that are uh, like anniversary cards, um, thank you cards, um, and you know appreciation and so on and so on. And while we were away on holiday, Maria also made some because there was a suggestion, due to our limited ministry, physically, that we write letters and do those kind of things. So every single card that she makes. She says, thank you, Jehovah, for the gift that you've given me of creativity. So that underlines exactly what you're saying. Mm. Yeah? Yep. The, exactly, exactly the point. And I mean, you know, whatever gifts we have, we can, each day we can say, thank you. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, thank you very much for that gift. Like you have gifts, your wife has gifts, Boniface has gifts, um, Amen. and and to to be able to His say that gift is putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. That's my line. Okay, there you go. I tell you, I go tell ahead. you, that is. Let me play Papa. Yeah, let me play Papa. There that's you know. my line. That that's my line. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's that's absolutely true. Uh, Verse, did you read verse 23 by any chance, Guy? Yes, I did. I can read it again if you'd like. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. All right. And and uh, in this section also, uh, because the original language version in the Hebrew would use the tetragrammaton, God's name is, is mentioned. Um, and for instance, in 23, they will not toil for nothing, nor will they bear children for distress because they are the offspring made up of those blessed by Jehovah and their descendants with it. So there, in the new world, there will be lots of positive changes. And whenever um, our dear brothers produce, um, based on the scriptures, the kind of picture uh, in the new world, you know, you can elaborate on that uh, quite considerably in your imagination so before we turn the page to so, to so one... just, just to um I, I don't i don't know where you're at on this topic and we don't need to go there but i i really mm -hmm. like the second part of what your verse 23 said because we're talking about the new earth yeah and the, uh nor bring forth children for or what, how did that say? Distress. For distress. Distress in this translation. Yeah. 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 So that that Go was on. talking about what takes place in the new earth, and I do believe, personally speaking, and we don't need to go into it, but I do believe mm -hmm. that there will be childbirth, but done correctly in the new earth. That's but anyway, we don't yeah. need to go into that. Correct. Correct. Yes. From we from agree. our under. Yes. Yes. Okay, because yes. uh, I don't, I, I did not know if uh, JWs took a stand on that, and mm -hmm. um, I, okay, I, I, I'm looking forward to that because I am a childless man, 
it yeah. is difficult yeah. but i believe one day i will have a child lovely lovely and what's more the important one is that there will be not the problems that exist nowadays Amen. there will there will be no uh very very tiny plastic particles in the blood of the fetuses right. and in the, in the lungs of the grown-ups and so on and so on it's absolutely right that's that's uh, the the bible teaches that and therefore we believe it of wow course. i did i did not know that okay yes well, yes yes i i'm yes, very yes, pleased yes. to hear that because yes um, mainline churches do not believe that Mainline churches do not teach the truth altogether. The problem no, with I, mainline I, you know I'm going to contend with you at a certain level. Mm -hmm. They do teach the the truth, maybe not all fully correctly, but they do. Well, there we are. Uh, I, I mean, if we're also con considering SDA um, and whatnot, but I, my sister is a Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. And I, I disagree with some of the things that she says, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I still see the heart of uh, Jesus uh, in her. And I, I, I respectfully agree to disagree with her on a variety of things. Yeah, 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 of course. Well, my, one of my daughters, I have three children, um, one of my daughters is uh, married, she was married in Germany to a man who at the time was um, in the medical corps of the military, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and we tried to have the kind of um, sensible conversation that you and I have. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know... <laughs> I have always believed that humans, no matter where they came from, are the same everywhere. And their needs, their needs are everywhere, uh, the same everywhere, you know, the, their basic needs. So then having learned Jesus' command virtually, don't do any judging, we try to live by that. So in other words, we would not look at someone from a different religion. And I've spoken to many who are adherents by birth to Islam. If, if we were to judge individuals, then we would be going against the law of love of the Christ. We can't do that. And therefore, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they're Pentecostal. It doesn't matter whether they, like my daughter, she is uh, Baptist. And uh, unfortunately, her husband is sort of uh, very much, um, how shall I say, he restricts himself to believing uh, one thing and one thing only. And therefore, communication such as what we are having uh, only took place for a very, very short time. In the meantime, my daughter. Um, she's now 166, 50, 55 years old. She wants to keep the communication open with me as long as I don't talk about the truth. So, okay, so that's, you know, that's the way it goes. But one of the, in, in studying to, to come around in a long-winded way to what you were uh, first of all saying, so, so number one, we don't judge anybody. It's not our place. Jesus eventually does it. Number two, we always look for the good in people. And sometimes it's difficult. You know, sometimes on Cora, <laughs> it's difficult to look well, for yes, the good. Well, yes, it can be. It, it's a challenge <laughs> out there sometimes. <laughs> you know, but, but in the end, that's what we are uh, interested in, to look for the good. To, to show the law of love to people and uh, acknowledge that there can be a common basis if people allow it to be there. Isn't so that what it, Christ did? Precisely. And, and we often say, 
we want to build bridges, not walls. And exactly that's what Jesus did. I mean, in the end, Jesus Jesus made a difference between his disciples because uh, he, he had taught them and others, but he was always welcoming. That's absolutely true, you know. But with regard to religion, if I may just finish that off, uh, over the years, what I've found is that it's a very clever ploy. If you simply say, for argument's sake, this is right and this is wrong, without much substance behind it, then immediately you're on the, on the road to confrontation. But if you say, I mix in, some of the truth, some half-truths, and some lies, then it becomes more palatable. And because humans often have a desire to worship, this is what's happened, that when the, the um, illustration that Jesus gave of the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the weeds, uh, there he makes a distinct difference, Jesus does, between the uh, two disciples from his viewpoint who have been taught by him and those that appear to be his disciples who in reality haven't been taught by him. They have been taught religion. And unless one is, you know, like you, like ourselves, is starting to think about things like you did earlier on where you read that scripture how can anybody accept reading that how can anybody but you see you know yourself guy most people do not study god's word true you know that Even and pastors. that's yeah of course i know that i mean years ago i was absolutely shocked when um somebody said uh, referring to that profession, uh, somebody said, it's a good job, it pays well, I get a pension, I get a house, so why would I want to leave this? He said, uh, one of them anyway said, I know you people have the truth, because everything that you teach is from the Bible. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Another uh, Another one said, um, I don't even believe in God, but it's a good job. The same reasoning. I mm. get a, I, I, you know, I get a good pay. I get a house. Or this and that. There. So we must accept that people of different backgrounds are, if you like, in religion for different reasons. The ones that really want to follow Jesus, really want to be Christ followers, they make sure that what they believe is firmly based on the Holy Scriptures. Why? Because Jesus used the holy inspired word of his father Jehovah as the basis from which he taught. And that's, again, where you and I have the common basis, you know? Amen. Where, Amen. where, we, say, where we say, okay, you know, what does the Bible teach? And of course, in a world that is manipulated, dominated by uh, Satan's thinking, it's not surprising that he uses religion to mislead people. Well, he always he, does. He, Very yeah, good. Yeah, good, good, good. Absolutely mm -hmm. true. And, you know, when it's so clearly defined, it's easy. But somebody, <laughs> a good friend of ours, a few years ago, he used a lovely illustration. He said, this is about how Satan is trying to hide the truth. How do you hide an elephant in a herd of elephants? Well, okay. Right. Well, I, I, right. I would have, you hide an elephant in a tree. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Well, have and, you ever seen that... an elephant in a tree? <laughs> Uh, I would think it would have to be a pretty big tree. 
See, it yeah. works anyway. But yeah, 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 your yeah, yeah. That's that's the point, isn't it? And when Jesus used this beautiful illustration, when I first came across it many, many years ago, I thought of myself a master in illustrations: the wheat and the tares, or the wheat and the weed. You know, how do you hide the truth by producing? In about about hundred years ago, there were about ten thousand different groups, all calling themselves Christian. Now we have about forty thousand. So, you know, <laughs> you, 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 if you want to hide the truth, that's the way that this master, this arch deceiver, this hateful person, Satan, the devil, that's how he has been able to hide the truth. But not from those who use their God-given abilities to keep on digging. And right. that's the beauty. That's the beauty. Okay. So... That was almost a sermon, wasn't it? Huh? Well, okay. No worries. Good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So on the page one twelve, turn over the page, please. Yeah. Okay. I no. I was going to. I was sorry. I was going to ask a question. Sorry. I beg your pardon. If you look at the picture on page twenty-seven, any comments well, on that? On page what? Uh, I'm rubbish. Page one hundred eleven. There is no picture. On the top, next to chapter 27. Oh, at the very top. Okay, yes. Any, any, any questions? Any comments on it? No. You, are you, are you suggesting uh, the pole versus the cross? Well, I'm asking. What's, what's your observation? That, please. Okay, just a minute. I'm enlarging it so I can take a better look at it. No, I should take a look too. Um, oops, no, she's not anymore. I just moved away. Okay. Um, there's the sign. Mm -hmm. You got religious leaders i don't see any roman soldiers no, on maybe. the stair yeah, yeah I, on, do, I do i do i do yeah on on the on the ladder yeah um uh, the the one uh, thing that I, that strikes me is he is not carrying the pole uh, yeah but because they're, they're taking him to the pole it's the other way around. Oh, it's taking him way. down. Oh, taking him yeah. down. Okay, got it, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah. Um, so likely, likely Joseph of Arimathea is there. Besides, obviously, uh, Mary, Martha, as well as um, <clears throat> uh, some of his disciples, Jesus' disciples. So, uh, yes, this is this is after Jesus' death. And it's probably, do you know when the darkness fell uh, in the, um, about three o'clock in the afternoon? Eli, Eli, uh, Eli, um, Eli, uh, Eli, 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 yeah. Uh, Sabahdani, Sabahdani, yeah, yeah. So, That's, which, my God, my God, why would he be saying that? Uh, why has thou <laughs> forsaken me? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, so I was I was thinking that um, sometimes people have questions. Why do we show in our illustration a bright pole? And do you know the answer to that? Because in oh, where is it? When Moses made the uh, serpent on a pole, and that's it. That's it. And they were told to look at the pole. And, That's it. Uh, right. Yeah. Very similar then later on Hebrews 12 to looking intently at the chief agent and perfecter of our faith. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. And the original language word apparently for this um, instrument is either Xylon, starting with an X, X, Y, L, O, N, or Storus. S T A U R O S, uh, which is similar to the pointed stakes that were surrounding Jerusalem. 
before 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 its destruction. So well, because I, of that, I have, I have no problem with the pole concept. In fact, I even wonder where they get the cost from. Do you have that answer? Yes. Thomas. Okay, my wife's saying in the back background that what what did you say? Thomas. It says the satanic symbol is what my wife says. Go ahead. Yeah, co correct. Tamus, uh, which is the mystic Tau, which is the T, which is another name for the for the man Nimrod, who according to the Bible was in violent opposition to Jehovah. So yes, your wife is quite right. It goes back to Babylon, the old Babylon. Hmm. Thomas for Thomas for T. Yeah, quite correct. Okay. Well, Any more questions? When uh, SDAs first started to come on the scene, they they would not have crosses on their building. Mm -hmm. And now they have crosses on their buildings, mm -hmm. uh, at least mm -hmm. some of them. And I'm not yeah. pleased with uh, no. In fact, um, there's a song that we've seen, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, called the Old Rugged Cross. I will walk out of the sanctuary when that when I see that song coming forward. Mm. I just know yeah. that I will not, and, and interestingly enough, some people have, you know, dialogued with me about it, and I had um, one friend, basically, he happened to be out uh, still in the fellowship hall, and uh, he saw me leaving the sanctuary. And he said, "You know, guy, I always think of you now when I hear that song." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I said, yeah, yeah. I, 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 my the best I can do is take a stand against it, and the best stand yeah. I can take is with my feet. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And ultimately, that's what people do, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the 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 in in actuality you cannot force the truth from the scriptures onto others because all of us have our free moral agency so either we accept it or we reject it and Amen. most most people according to jesus matthew 7 verse 13 you know most people are on the broad road yeah. why i i don't disagree what's yeah. that uh, why? Well, give you an example. Um, our son Mark, who we brought up from a previous marriage, he's now forty something. He was brought up and and trained based on the Bible, and he decided when he was about thirty something like that, it was too much like hard work, and to be a true Christian can be hard work. I mean you in your endeavors to focus people's attention on the bible you know that because you've seen the opposition oh, from yeah. from in from individuals who you've seen will you see the opposition yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah 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 and you know <laughs> it's it's when you one expression that i've sometimes used among our brothers it's not surprising that we get persecution it's not surprising number one jesus foretold it yeah and number two we're working behind enemy lines that's right and that's and that's what it is if you want to uh defend just bear with me i've got somebody coming that i need to let in sure. Ja, Christina. Hallo. Wunderbar. Mache ich auf, ja? Kleinen Moment bitte. Danke. Sweetheart? That's not you, guy. What's that? I didn't call you, sweetheart. Don't get the wrong oh, idea. Oh, I, 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 I am very thankful. <laughs> 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 okay. I just need to open the door for somebody. We live in a little complex, and they have a main, a main access door. And whenever somebody arrives, they uh, they need to ring us, so we let them in.
Right, I'm back. I am here. Okay. Just let me change rooms. Katrina is on her way up here. Yeah. So no video. Mm -hmm. I don't have video. Who's going to let her in? I've let her in. She's on her way up here now. Back to what we're talking about. Sure. When uh, when we are working behind enemy lines, Christina. when we work behind enemy lines, we can expect fire. Well, of course. You know, course. so it's so it's not surprising, is it? But all right, um, it, that, it, in the end, we don't need to go in this direction. But that reminds me of yeah, uh, Elisha, or Elisha in uh, revealing the that there the force that is uh, for us is far greater than those that are against that's, us. That's that's so, it. That's it. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, spot on. And the attendant hadn't been able to see these. Uh, uh, horses around them uh, with his eyes of faith, but uh, the prophet did, didn't he? So mm -hmm. on the on the uh, next page, please, one twelve. Mm -hmm. dig, dig deeper, deepen your understanding of why Jesus gave up his life, and consider how you benefit. Now, again, this is probably very very basic for you, but. As it says, uh, Adam was a perfect man who disobeyed God and put humans in a path to sin and on a path to sin and death. And then on the right hand page, 113, Jesus was a perfect man who obeyed God and put humans on a path to perfection and eternal life. I mean, that's something that, you know, we, we agree on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, the point three on page 112, um, Jesus' death frees us from sin and death. And this is a pertinent question. What opportunity did Adam lose when he disobeyed God? Mm. Huh? Yeah, we, we, were given, we were given the authority to basically be the caregivers of this planet. And, and and with everything was there was no uh, there was no nothing that was bad and it was all good exactly and uh, he lost the keys to this planet as he handed them over to Satan yeah absolutely and what's uh, what of course is so um, thought-provoking it was thought-provoking for me you know many decades ago that he did this consciously because he was Adam Adam was created with uh, complete or perfect for the purpose intended meaning a human living on earth forever so he also had a perfect conscience so he would his action would result in him being described by God as a rebel because of the deliberate decision to go against God's will. Yeah, he, he, yeah Adam's decision was 100% deliberate uh, yeah. and, and whatnot. Compared to Eve's, she was beguiled. It was still a deliberate yeah. decision yeah, but not in the same way as Adam. 
that's right. And Adam, there's a header, header for the household. Maria often says, when we go through that section, she says, well, where was he? You know, while, while the, um, the serpent deceived Eve, or be, uh, deceived Eve, or, or beguiled her, yeah, where was Adam? Now, you know, we don't know, the Bible doesn't say. Read Romans 12, uh, rubbish, read Romans 5, 12, and this, then well, discuss. Actually, the Bible does say, although it doesn't necessarily identify uh, the definition, it says that Adam was with her. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the problem is we don't understand what the word with necessarily means, mm -hmm. and there's, mm -hmm. there's where the confusion comes in. Does that mm -hmm. mean he was standing right by her? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Or does yeah. that mean that he was wi with her as in in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Which was massive, of course, wasn't it? You know, mm -hmm. according, according. I mean, if you have four rivers there, then <laughs> it would have to be massive. All right. Would you like to read Romans 5.12, something that maybe you've come across before? Sure. Which, mm -hmm. uh, which I say was tongue in cheek. Right, right. One moment. Wherefore, as by one man, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, Romans 8, 2, and death mm -hmm. by sin, so and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin, of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we we often use, when somebody can't quite understand this concept, we often use the idea, now, nowadays, I'm just trying to get myself a bit more comfortable, nowadays we know more about genetic inheritance, you know, the genome and so on and so on. We know a lot more about genetic inheritance. So that often makes it more uh, makes it easier for a person to accept that everyone uh, has sinned because the gene pool was contaminated so that's uh, so the question there how has adam's sin affected your life now here comes the question well how has it affected my life not mm -hmm. at all other than the fact that i continue to get older each day i don't know how to stop that mm -hmm. and uh my aging process and um the 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 fact that uh, we've got a, a peace loving world out there that is just so loving i mean that's that's, that's definitely an effect of adam sin right yeah, I think you have to qualify that with more than that you do it. I don't know whether he is. He, he probably understands your sense of humor. I know. Either. I know what I mean. All right. Yeah, there we are. You know, that's that's yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I remember, you know, my mum, um, when, like, uh, about 40 years ago, we, we accepted um, what the Bible taught. And uh, as a result, we became baptized. We were baptized in 82, got married in 81. And of course, being full of the truth of the Bible, we talked to every Tim, uh, Tom, Dick and Harry, including our relatives. Where well, my mum was being the kind of person that was uh, a very loving and very caring woman. She was very much interested. She had lost her husband in the early 1940s uh, on the Eastern Front, in likely in Stalingrad. And so she wanted to know, you know, what it was all about and this and that. So eventually, at, at the ripe of ripe old age of 70 she was baptized as one of jehovah's mm. people as one of jehovah's people and uh, i remember on one occasion uh, speaking with her on the telephone because we did speak fairly regularly at that time and 
um, I, I used to, I, I related um, this, this uh, idea of Romans 5.12. And my mom, you know, good old soul, she must have been 60 something. She said, me, me having sinned, mm. never, right. never. So, Except for right then. <laughs> Okay. So, so I, I took her to uh, to this scripture, I think, and all also Romans three twenty three. No, she said, that's not me. Um, now no. I I I know my mom's background, and the the dear 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 woman that she was, she had made mistakes. So I had to explain to her that from Jehovah's viewpoint, you know. What he says here, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory, uh, also applies to her. But it was a very difficult lesson for her to to accept, you know. And and uh, but it was quite endearing to me to having to tell my own mum, who had brought me up uh, and and taught me all kinds of lovely things, uh, to say to her, look, mum. We are all in the same boat, you know. We all need Jesus' ransom. We all need that sacrifice, and so there we are. Just a personal experience. Amen. And of yeah, and of course, unfortunately, the first sort of thirty odd years of my life, I, in various areas, I made a mess of it. Until kindly, Jehovah showed us mercy, pulled us, Maria and myself. Both of us, we got baptized at the same time, in the same pool at the time. So that was also, Maria often says that was a better day than the day of our wedding. No. Yeah, yeah. She, she also, she, she often says, you know, that in the past she was worse than I was. I said, you don't know the half of it. So, mm. you know, I'm afraid <laughs> we, we both. Need, need the ransom of Jesus Christ. Okay. I can't think of a certain individual. I can't think of any one individual who doesn't. Yeah, of course. It's quite true, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, maybe you've come across John 3.16 3, before? No, no. I've never seen that verse. <laughs> For okay. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, I forgot mm -hmm. to turn to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> good one, good one, good one. So, why did Jehovah send His Son to the earth? Because of love. That's it. Yeah, the greatest expression of love ever. And uh, when we, um, on a on a yearly basis, we commemorate the the giving of Jesus' life um, on the same date as the date that the angel of death passed over in Egypt, over the houses of the Israelites. Nisan 14 is the biblical one. And this year it falls on the 15th. And after sundown, when it's the beginning of the new day, uh, Nisan 14, then we commemorate that event. Like the Passover, it was uh, remembered once a year. So we do that once a year as well, on the same basis, because for true Christians, the Passover was replaced by, you know, the, the Passover lamb, Jesus. Uh, and Jesus said, Re keep doing this in remembrance of me. So the fourth, the fourth section, Jesus' death can benefit all people. Now it says, play the video, but I mean, that's up to you whether you want to. Why did Jesus die, which you know anyway? How could the death of one man benefit all people? Because he was sinless. He was without sin. Mm -hmm. He was the perfect mediator. Mm -hmm. He was a perfect yeah. sacrifice. That's it. But even That's... he didn't know that until he went to his father god in heaven again i don't understand 
-hmm. I understand you. I don't understand the general concept of, anyway, we've been there. It's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. So we, we, um, when, when in, in Timothy, go on, would you like to read that again? Because we read it earlier on, didn't we? First Timothy 5, 2, 2, 5 and 6. One moment. Please. I really think it needs to have four in there too. Yes, but might as well read the whole. Might as well read the whole lot. We, we read it before. We can't read it often enough. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. You know the question there. Is who is this who? And uh, to do that, you need to go back to verse three. Mm. For this, this is a good and accept. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Mm. So there is a reference to God, and how is He our Savior? Mm. Because He sent His Son, who would pay the mm. ransom. Mm. So God is our Savior, because a lot of people want to say. Well, God's our Savior. See, therefore, he's, um, it's Jesus. No, mm-hmm. God's our Savior because he sent his son to Lovely. ransom humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the easiest uh, illustration that I came across some years ago, Guy, was in a, uh, a rescue attempt. Say, for instance, there has been a so-called natural disaster. In a rescue attempt of trying to find survivors, there is usually one person who directs the rescue attempt. In in this case, it's otherwise Jeff. you have confusion. That's it. That's it. And God is not a God of confusion. At so, least not the God I serve. Uh, that that's it. Very good. Very good. So so there is the the thought that uh, because it needs organizing. Um, Jehovah organize it. Amen. You know, the God uh, who is not a God of disorder. So it also involves, I mean, if you look at the example of the first century disciple, Jesus sent out 12, then he sent out 70. So it also involves uh, others who simply are instruments. They're not. Um, going by their own originality they are simply you're you're saying i need other people come on now i thought i could do this all by myself (laughs) yeah 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 as i say i'm i'm glad one of us understands your sense of humor because because i do i do okay so the question there yeah um Uh Then discuss this question. Adam was a perfect man who put humans on a path to sin and death. Jesus was also a perfect man. In what way did he provide a corresponding ransom? You you answered that anyway. Yeah, you said the sinless, sinless Jesus provided the corresponding ransom. And for your for your for the sake of of, um, reasoning on this. Again, on the Trinity, when people um, try and understand the ransom, which is generally not widely taught, then if one uses the correct expression in the Greek, which is anti-litron, then one can ask the question corresponding ransom, corresponding to whom? God or Adam? Right, right. And that sometimes helps people to appreciate that, hang on a minute, you know, this idea of Jesus being God cannot be. But it's it's obvious only for those who reason things out and who have a respect, receptive heart. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the time. Are you okay for time, for time, Guy? Yeah, I'm fine for time right now. Lovely. Okay, go on. You were saying. Um, so, uh, just to confirm what you just said, First Corinthians fifteen forty-five, 
as it relates to um, what the paragraph said. Yeah. And so it is written, the mm -hmm. first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Yeah. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Yeah, exactly. Spot on. Spot on. That's that uh, sort of, you know, to anybody who wishes to know the truth, that sort of nails it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Super. Five, the ransom is Jehovah's gift to you. Jehovah's friends view the ransom as a personal gift. For example, read Galatians 2.20 and then discuss this question. Would you like to read Galatians 2.20, please? No, I don't read the, I don't read the, anything out of Galatians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there you go, right? So Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, yeah. who loved me and gave himself for me. I, I, the, I love this verse, actually. Um, it is beautiful. It, 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 it's, it's, we, we think that faith comes from us. It does not. Faith comes as we put our, our alliance and our allegiance and our, and our love and our, and our trust and our hope in the Son of God. Then we get his faith in us as a result. But it, the faith itself comes from the Son of God. Absolutely. Because, let's face it, how many aspects of the fruit of uh, God's Spirit are there? Nine. That are, that are mentioned in Galatians. Mm -hmm. One of one of them is what faith. Amen. So absolutely, what you're saying is spot on. Verse twenty, it says, Galatians two twenty. I'm nailed to the stake along with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who is living in union with me. Indeed, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and handed himself over for me. Now, Interesting that it took the word of out of there. I, I really like that word of. Which one? Which one? Um, I live by the feet of, uh, and you replaced it with in. Mm -hmm. And so I, I personally, I personally would prefer keeping that word of. That word of, I could write a book off that word of. Right, okay. So that's the last part of it. In the flesh, in the flesh I live by faith of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although what Paul is expressing is quite right, because it's what you're doing and what I'm doing. By mm -hmm. faith in the, in the Son of God, namely, not only as a mediator, but also as the one who makes the future for all of us possible, if we want I, I to. Don't, I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's it loses in that just replacing that word of loses a lot of power that mm -hmm. is that that is, that could be availed to the to the seeking heart. No, mm -hmm. when when you come to understand that faith itself doesn't come from us, I mean, mm -hmm. we we grace. Okay, yeah, we understand that comes from uh, from God uh salvation yeah okay as i accept that comes from god but mm -hmm. faith mm -hmm. i mean it's it, it seems like that just so ba backward to think that faith itself our faith my faith would come from the son of god i mean it, it uh, wait no it's in me i i i choose to have faith yeah yeah yes you choose yeah but it still comes from the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, since, since Jehovah and Jesus always work in harmony, there's nothing wrong with saying that. Well, um, amen. And, and I'm thinking, you know, the expression, faith follows the things heard. So first of all, you consider the Bible, I consider the Bible, and we say, wow, you know, that 
is fantastic mm. and we accept it we accept it as true so we we build our faith on that so what you're saying is not wrong at all you know mm. no 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 problem at all so how did the apostle paul indicate that he viewed the ransom as a personal gift well how didn't he mm -hmm. i mean he, there, there's a i mean we i could yeah i could wax fluently on that one yeah i'm quite sure but he was 100 percent convinced wasn't he absolutely and that is what jehovah and jesus want us to do they want us to accept it as a personal gift uh, at another place i think uh, Paul was moved to write under inspiration the Son of God offered himself up for me mm. so he took it personal and that you know like many years ago again after all the things that I did wrong to be able to say wow thank you thank you thank you was a terrific moment and a terrific um, joy you know, that's uh, when Adam sinned, he and all his descendants were condemned to death. But Jehovah sent his son to do to die so that you can have the opportunity to to enjoy everlasting life. Amen. So the bottom, there's a, a bullet point question. Someone I, may I, ask. I like to I like to say that he died so that I might live. And he lives yeah. so that I might die. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah. Although, but what's interesting, and I, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to attempt to digress here. Again, something that I came across once again many years ago. Uh, it's in John 11, I think it's verse 26, where Jesus said that some alive will never die at all. You know when he was discussing with with Martha mm -hmm. uh, the the resurrection, the death of mm -hmm. of his friend Lazarus, and I thought to myself, goodness me, how can that be? But of course, the time period we live in, some who put their full faith in Jehovah and Jesus will live on into the new world. Amen. Yeah. So. And that, once again, is a tremendous eye-opener. Okay. So, uh, did we cover this? Someone may ask, how could one man die for all people? How would you answer? I think you, 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 we covered that, didn't we? Uh, how do you... I don't know where you... Oh, yeah. I, th right I think the very we have. I think we have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As you read the following verses, imagine how Jehovah must have felt while his son suffered. Yeah, that's a point, isn't it? Read John 19, 1 to 7, 16 to 18, and then discuss this question. Would you like to read that, please? Sure. Uh, John, John 19, 1 to 7, 16 to 18. And since that's longer, um, Boniface, I'll have you come on uh, with KJV as well, and you can help me with that one. If you're there, Boniface. That is that is us. So John nineteen one through seven, and you take like four verses. I'll take three. You can take the first four. John nineteen one through seven. Neat. And while he's turning there, uh, this just reminds me of uh, the uh, little skit that I wrote related to Pilate going home that night. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you actually seen, I, that is out on Quora. Have you mm -hmm. seen that where Pilate and uh, his wife have a conversation? Was it quite recent? No, this has been a little while ago. It may be because, uh, but I can't say for certain. I'll, I'll see if I can find it again and send it your way. Mm. 
like like saying uh, about the dream that she was given yeah yeah well yeah exactly and and just the dialogue that goes from that um yeah. Yeah. as or you know that that it, it you know we don't go into pilot uh, how pilot uh ended up uh at the end of the day that day mm -hmm. but you gotta imagine that conversation didn't go yeah. well I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain because it rings bells. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Bonifus, do you have that? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I, I have it. So, um, chapter, okay, John chapter 19, 1 to 7. Okay, and just go to 1 then, to 4, and I'll take the other three. Sorry. Just take, just go from one to four. I'll take the other three. All right. right. All right. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a cloud of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him purple robe. And he said, Hail, king of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Then Boniface, go ahead and read verses 16 through 18, same chapter. 16 through 18, the same chapter. Verse 16, then delivered he, then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of Skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. Amen. Right, great. So I'll just read the last uh, three verses because of translation. Uh, because in the in the original language in the Greek, it uses the word Somilonostorus. We translate it differently. Then he handed him over to be executed, verse 16, on the stake. So they took charge of Jesus, bearing the torture stake for himself. He went out to the so-called skull place, which is called Golgotha in Hebrew. There they nailed him to the stake alongside two other men, one on each side, with Jesus in the middle. So it's an account that is generally quite well known, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the fact, the fact that sadly it gets mixed up in uh, in half truths is not very nice. All right. So the bullet point asks the question: How do you feel about what Jehovah and Jesus did for you? Amen. Mm. That's all I can say to that one. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've gone through this over the years many, many, many times. But but as you've read it, as you just read it, I can't help being stirred and thinking how Jehovah must have felt. And what uh, has always impressed me Jehovah knew 
that the trial was illegal. The Sanhedrin was not allowed by law to meet at night. Right. It was uh, at the at the home of the chief priest at the time, and everything was wrong about the whole thing. Now, Jehovah being the God of justice, of perfect justice, what self-control he must have had to, to keep himself back from intervening. You know, well, and the son of God himself knew it too. Yes, of course he did. Absolutely right. But the, you know, when you, when you look at the sensitivity of Jesus with regard to like the, the woman with the flow of blood or the man with the withered hand, or the leper, or the blind man, or the deaf man. The compassion that Jesus has indicated for these people reflected the compassion that Jehovah has. Well, three of my favorite words. Unconditional, agape, love. Yeah, that's right. And what people are missing out on is really highlighted with these uh, appreciative feelings that we as imperfect humans have, how much more so Jehovah himself, how it must have pained him. You know, when... Uh, in, I, I, uh, I, the only correction I would have is, uh, I would put that in a present tense. Yes, even now, yeah, of course. But you know, uh, I mean, this this discussion that we have, which is almost most enjoyable, because it centers on the Word of God, uh, Jehovah is also pleased about, because we not only focus on his words, but we also make the difference between what is true and what is false. Amen. And therefore, we give him glory, because Amen. he is the God of he is the God of truth, like Jesus always spoke truth, you know. So by us doing what we are doing, we give him glory, we give him yeah. praise, as the, yeah, as the originator of everything that is truthful and everything that is good. So yeah, you know. Good. Uh, on the page 0116, please, Guy, do you want to read through? You want to go through that under under summary? Oh, one one four for me. Is it? Yes, that's it. What did I say? Sorry. You use the word six. All right. Well, must have been okay, must summary. must have been the internet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It could have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's just my hearing. My, uh, you know, I have a great uh, hearing. I just the listening part. <laughs> it's it's yeah. listen 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 yeah. it's my pronunciation it's not your hearing <laughs> I, made the, I, I made the mistake I know. go on I'm then just, please we're, we're just uh, having fun yes, Jesus right. death provides the basis for Jehovah to forgive our sins and it gives us the opportunity to enjoy life forever amen mm -hmm. why did Jesus die passion that's one one way of putting it, yeah. In uh, yeah. in fact, there was a movie. I don't know if you've heard of it called "The Passion of the Christ." Uh, the yes. Passion of Christ. Yes, where I heard they of it. exonerate the cross as his passion, which is absolutely not true. No, no, of course not. His passion was not the cross. Jesus did not come to the world to die. Jesus came to the world to live. Yeah. and bring us with him but yeah. he chose to die that we might live yeah absolutely right yeah in what way was jesus perfect human life a corresponding ransom well mm -hmm. we've already discussed that in pretty That's big right. detail yep yeah. um, how can jesus death benefit you Oh, uh, only, let's see, I get eternal life without sin and no corruption, no 
trouble no uh, no uh, you know no, there might be trouble but not in the way that we understand it today um as in there's going to be challenges there's going to yeah. be you know things like that but uh where we can spend eternity together with the uh, with the father and son of unconditional agape love other than that i can't think of any benefits <laughs> a family you know family sure. Absolutely. Sure. You know, sure. Children without the problems of of child rearing. Family without the problems. Yes, that that would be good because uh, yeah. yeah, you know, in pregnancy, instead of the the pains uh, greatly increased as with Eve, um, the pains of pregnancy greatly increased with what is in the real term a what what Jehovah would call a normal pregnancy. Without all the uh, associated, um, at times extremely uh, hurtful pains, I believe. Well, I've got yeah. to tell you, you're the only people group that I am aware of to date that actually understands that we will be giving birth in in the new earth. Maybe yeah. not in heaven uh, per se. And now I know you and I disagree on that aspect of of the thousand years but mm -hmm. in the new earth i think we can both agree that as we are building forward and working and whatnot um i didn't you know i've always believed i will have children then that's what the bible teaches it is what the bible teaches yeah, what, what, yeah and not to belabor a point, but I what I don't understand about those that take an opposite viewpoint on that mm -hmm. before be, before sin came, mm -hmm. we were told to go forward and propagate the earth. Then Correct. sin came, and we were told to go forth and propagate the earth. Correct. Then sin is removed, and suddenly that's no longer something that we should yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what I was uh, mentioning early on, you know, how do you hide the truth? In in yeah. fact, how do you, how do you hide? I mean, one of the reasons that uh, we've often used um, is that if there are religions that are not in harmony with God's word, there has to be a way of life that Jesus was talking about that is in harmony with God's word. And it's, it's just a question of, it's a bit like in, in Britain, um, I believe, there, a few years ago there was a report, and there are about two million pounds worth of uh, one point, uh, one pound coins in circulation. They're counterfeit. Now, they don't, they don't collect them because it costs more than two million pounds to collect two million coins but does the existence of the counterfeit coins prove that there are no real one point co coins of course and it's and it's the same with banknotes it's the same reasoning yes there are probably millions or maybe even billions of pounds dollars whatever uh, currencies that are fake but does it prove that there are no true ones and this is this is the whole point what satan has done is mixed the true with the false so that it needs quite a lot of work to filter out what is really true and most people are not prepared to do it for the reasons that you gave early on when we were talking about that yeah so in in uh, the suggested explore section all these are either articles or videos i think there there's one web article another web article there's a watchtower there's another uh, watchtower but all these are supportive articles that confirm that individuals who um, who at one time lived out of harmony with 
God's ways of love, accepted the ransom, and then wanted to worship God in a way that found his approval. That's basically it. Yeah. Amen. So on on uh, the bottom left hand side, next to those um, explore sections, when you pray, regularly thank Jehovah for the gift of his son. I'm sure that's something you do anyway. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Amen. So lovely. Um, if I may suggest that next week, if we do 28, yeah. Sure. And and that is uh, when we receive a gift, how do we show appreciation for it? Well, by refusing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah. Love, lovely. So thank you ever so much, my dear friend, for your thoughts and for your sense of humor. Much appreciated. Okay, if we close in prayer. Please do. Yeah. Jehovah, to so many throughout the earth, in fact millions, your name means more than just a name. It means your personality. It means the different qualities of your personality. The most dominant one being the kind of love that so often is mentioned by our dear friend Guy. We certainly appreciate that the gift of your dear son Jesus is the most astounding, the most welcome expression of your love that any of us could ever receive, not only because of the benefit that in due time we hope to get, but also because it glorifies you. A situation that has been produced by your chief adversary in the Garden of Eden, where he wanted to thwart your purpose of a perfect human race on earth, perfect in the sense of without sin, you found ways immediately of uh, redeeming loving and obedient humankind so that they could have a future. And as I mentioned more than once, that this most astounding gift of agape love is available to everyone. Mm. The, the fact that many, according to your son Jesus, in fact most, uh, turn away that gift, that is tragic. And it is very, very sad, of course. We ourselves want to time and, time and again lift up our hearts to you in appreciation of what you've done for us, what your dear son has done for us. And especially around this time, when we're getting towards the day where your dear son willingly offered up his perfect life as a corresponding ransom, we want to increase our appreciation of that. So thank you so much for this fine material based on your holy inspired word that we could discuss openly, freely, and with appreciation. Thank you so much too for not only Guy uh, being involved in this discussion, but also Boniface and to the best of my knowledge, uh, Guy's dear wife, Irene. We certainly have good reason to be grateful to you as we return thanks through the one who made all these things possible. Your dear son Jesus, to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you right. ever so much. Yes, and thank you and uh, blessings to you on the coming week. Thank you very much. Yes, we, we have uh, lots of changes that have gone on and, and now being part uh, under the umbrella of a Spanish speaking congregation. Our midweek meetings are uh, mainly in Spanish, with sometimes we have uh, parts in English, but the weekend meetings are all in English. So while we were away, uh, limitado amigo, limitado.
Mm. Solo, solo un poco. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Uh, limited, limited. Yeah, uh, when we, when, when we went away uh, for a couple of weeks, the past couple of weeks, we were on Tenerife, which is another island, and we tied in by video conferencing to our meetings, and I was also able to tie in with some uh, who. I had served with in the north of England, so that was nice as well. But uh, yeah, this uh, this coming Sunday, our discussion. First of all, we usually have a. This is now a special talk, uh, all to do with what hope uh, does exist under these current circumstances, because that's what humans need. They need a hope, you know. Amen. So that's. So that's the, the the special talk that's given worldwide uh, on this Sunday. It's usually half an hour, and then uh, we have a discussion around the subject: why we can trust Jehovah, why we can trust Jesus, and how love and trust really are the essence of our relationship um, with our Creator and. His son. So that's that. Usually, is audience participation takes usually takes about an hour, and it's always most enjoyable because you you get this is in the English language. Uh, you get the insight on the feelings of individuals. You know how how they feel about our heavenly Father. So that is uh, we are looking forward to that. So we send you our love again. And give your dear wife a hug. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. And thank you for your good wishes as well. All right. Blessings to you. Thank you very much indeed, Guy. Hasta un 